My name is JT, and this is a story about how I built my homestead. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of JT Time. JT here. Um, so we are actually inside the house right now. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a change of scenery for this particular episode. I've been doing a lot of work on, or research I should say, on the AC and or HVAC system, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, HVAC, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of research on that and we have some pretty uh, strong, I should say, uh, exhaust vents for our kitchen and our master bath. And when I say strong, I mean like, it can go up to maybe 800 CFM is what it's rated for. So when you have a tight house and you have a vent that goes that high, it's uh, code, I believe, is, uh, requires you to, they, they say, install makeup air, essentially. So my original thought was I would go ahead and do makeup air for my um, dehumidifier that I'm installing on the house. The downside about that is that you, I contacted the manufacturer um, and I ran into a few issues. Uh, the first issue is that there's no way for me to communicate uh, between my, my exhaust vents for my kitchen and, or my bathroom and the dehumidifier. So that's problem number one. And what I mean by communicate is I can't get it to the point where if I turn on my exhaust vent, my dehumidifier would know to turn on and bring in some fresh air. Um, my dehumidifier does have the capacity to take in fresh air and there's a filter on it and everything which is nice so we're getting like really clean fresh air in the house the downside about it is that there's just no way for me to communicate with that and i tried different methods i looked up different ways to like force the communication to happen and it just wasn't very um elegant uh, it wasn't an elegant solution and in addition to that when i contacted the manufacturer this is my second problem um, the manufacturer of that particular unit actually recommended against using it as makeup air uh, only because uh, you don't want to um, you don't want to go above the actual capacity of the incoming air and what that means is the dehumidifier has a fan in it as well, and that fan can only pump maybe 430 CFM, is I guess the number that the manufacturer gave me. My units can pump 800. So if they were both running at the same time, that's 1,600 cubic feet of air that it's pulling out of the house, and my dehumidifier has to make up for that air. So because it, the manufacturer is saying don't go above it, probably because it's going to hurt the fan or whatever. Um, I don't know exactly how, but it probably will. So my solution is to actually have a dedicated makeup air. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to install that uh, today. So I'll be doing a little bit of roof work, a little bit of ceiling, and uh, kind of show you my strategy on the water barrier for that. Um, but this stuff is more or less, I'm hoping, simple to install. Uh, the reason why I'm looking up right now is because I'm trying to figure out the angle that I want to give you guys. So that, that's the kitchen vent, that's an eight inch vent. The vent that I'm probably gonna set up will probably be behind it. Um, and it's gonna be a six inch vent uh, right, right behind it essentially. Uh, and, and that vent, it's gonna be on a motorized damper. So the reason why I need it to be a motorized damper is because when the house is sealed, I don't want fresh air just to come in automatically. I want it to come in controlled, so that's why I have it on a motorized damper. So the way the motorized damper is gonna work is it's gonna plumb into um, the kitchen vent, and when I turn on the kitchen vent, the motorized damper will know to open up. So essentially, it's just letting, it's, it's essentially the same thing as opening up a window in the house, but it's controlled. It's opening up a window when it knows that the house is gonna be pulling air out. So. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to build it out yet, but um, NS Builders, which is like a great building, building company up in the north area, they did a kitchen vent that I want to mimic, uh, essentially. And uh, it, the way it works is there's, I'll, I'll, it'll show up a little bit better when I actually build it out, but my concept is the same concept. So this vent right here, which is your eight inch vent that's going to be pulling air out, 
that's gonna plumb into a uh, kitchen vent that's here. And right outside of that vent, which is essentially around the perimeter of the housing for that vent that's gonna pull air up, that's gonna be my makeup air, which is gonna tie into my vent right next to this one, essentially. And that vent is going to be, um, it's not going to have an actual motor on it to blow. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna, my metaphor is open up a window so that as my kitchen vent is exhausting, it's pulling in new air into the house and thus creating a path for the air to exit. Uh, because if that makeup air wasn't there, essentially what would happen is that kitchen vent, if my house was sealed enough, uh, it would depressurize my house and it would make it hard to open up external doors. It'd make it hard to open up like kitchen doors and stuff like that or any doors to any room and things like that. And this is more or less uh, an inconvenience and kind of a, a poor design of the house uh, when you try to make the house extremely tight like this. So I'm going to set up those two vents. Hopefully that'll take me like an hour or two. And then the next part of the house, the next part of my task um, is my bathroom over here. Uh, I have my plumber install my water hotline and cold line here and my sink line here. But thinking of the layout a little bit more, we think that we have this nice bay right here, which is gonna be a good kind of vanity location. And originally we had it tied in here already. Um, for the uh, the sewer line uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the line here I'm gonna cut this line right here and I'm gonna take this pipe move it over here take that pipe move it over here so just switch swap and then the cold and hot water lines I'm just gonna take those out and then I'm going to stick them back down here which it's nice because they were originally down here anyways. Uh, so we'll just end up with a little bit more pipe in the attic, which is fine. But I'm just gonna move that over here so that we can have a sink vanity over here. And then the power, um, I might move over here. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet whether I wanna go ahead and do that or whether I want a light fixture there as well and just have another light fixture over here. I'll, I'll talk to my electrician about doing that after the fact. I'm not gonna worry about it for now just because pulling out these, um, these, these uh, staples sometimes can be challenging without damaging the wires. So I don't know if I wanna do that or if I want to just go ahead and hold off on doing the move until I'm done with um, it, until my electrician just does it for me, essentially. So let's continue on. I, I want to do that. And then if I have a little bit more time, um, the next task for me to do, and this is all pinging on whether I'm just not feeling up for the challenge today, which is why I'm like, oh, maybe it's gonna be a short day. Um, is I want to remove all of the fire blocking for the house. So the fire blocking is those two by sixes that are uh, against each one of the roof rafters and the ceiling joists. Um, and those fire blockings, originally my idea was to completely seal those off on the house. That uh, I talked to the city about that design and the city essentially said, no, that's not a good idea. Um, plus you need to have a very special design for that if you want to even try to attempt to do that. So um, the typical design that you want is you want airflow um, somehow. This is in the south of Texas. Um, so so you, you need to have airflow from your soffit somehow or some kind of way to vent off your attic even if your attic is unvented or conditioned. So what that ultimately is gonna look like is I'm gonna go back and install, they call them baffles, um, B-A-F-F-L-E. And uh, when I get to that video, you'll see me install those baffles, but essentially they are pieces of uh, plastic that actually butt up right against the roof line and allow the airflow to go right against the roof decking uh, or sheathing and travel up to my attic 
um, ridge vent that I have or roof ridge vent that I have at the top. Uh, because those are there right now, we're not getting anywhere near the airflow that we should be getting. So I wanna remove those um, and install baffles instead because the baffles will still allow air movement even though it's also blocking off um, from uh, insulation or anything like that falling into my soffits. So that's a lot actually, that's a lot. And being that it's already kind of like 9.30 today, I don't think I'm gonna get to that, but we'll see. Uh, let me go ahead and get my tools ready. I'll meet you guys back at the, uh, at the attic or the on top of my roof to start cutting stuff. All right, we'll see you guys soon. All right guys, sorry if it's a little dark here, but we're back in the attic of the house. I have my drill with me in a pretty large drill bit. So what I'm gonna do is you typically wanna make sure that these vents are centered uh, between your rafters. So I'm gonna find a location that's kinda centered between my uh, roof rafters and I'm going to uh, drill a hole into it and that's kinda where I'm gonna center up my port for my exhaust vent, which I'll show you guys outside. Uh, but for, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and drill both sides, this side and that side. And that means I'm gonna commit to at least finishing that portion of the scope today. Uh, so we'll see, but I'm already up here, so I'm, wanna, I'm gonna drill both sides. Uh, but let me show you how I pick um, the side on this side. So this is, the, this is that same vent right here that I was talking about earlier, the eight inch um, vent for the exhaust. This is my sewer vent for my um, plumbing. So I don't wanna be, this is not a good spot because this uh, profile for this vent is maybe about this big. This profile probably goes all the way out to like right here. So it'd be pretty tight to fit down here. Um, so I could go up a little bit more and go here, but this involves me reaching up higher, so it's a little unsafer. So I'm gonna go down a little bit. I'm gonna probably go down to like maybe right here and drill up and then install the vent down there. I think that would be a good spot for it. Uh, and it's still in a pretty solid area to get down to where the kitchen um, exhaust is going to be, which is gonna be right here somewhere. Uh, so I think this will be easier to get to than having to go up here and wrapping it around here and having two duck works right here. All right, so let me go ahead and knock that out and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Sorry that I can't, I, I, wish, I wish I could drill and actually conduct work at the same time, but if you notice on my body, I don't have my shoulder mount on me today. I forgot to bring it. So I'll do my best to kind of record as I go along and uh, record live action where I can. All right, so I'll catch you here in a little bit. All right, guys, so it's a little dark in here. Uh, you do see a little bit of light because I drilled the holes already, but we're over here by the master bath. And essentially how I chose the location was I saw that this right here is pretty much kind of where it's at. So I, I chose to go uh, two feet up and one rafter over. Uh, so this is kind of where the hole is at right here. And that's not, that's, that's pretty far away from pretty much anything else that's in the area. I got two other penetrations right there, uh, one for the sink and one for the toilet. Um, so I figured let's just go ahead and do it here and that way I can put the, uh, the, the, the vent on the ceiling somewhere near this general area which hopefully will be kind of in between the two different ducts that I plan on having for the bathroom exhaust. So I'll catch you guys outside, all right? It's, it's pretty hot in here. Uh, I feel like I'm in a sauna right now. <laughs> See you soon. All right, so last update uh, before I go on the roof. Uh, I thought about it a little bit and was thinking, well, how am I gonna center up that, um, that piece that I had so that I know where to cut? And this is what I did to do that. So the hole is already on the, the roof. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to essentially, uh, I, I cut the hole here so that this piece would slide right into it and now I can center up this box on that hole and pretty much know exactly where to cut it. Uh, so I figured I'd show you guys that since I didn't um, think about it until after I stopped the video. Uh, so let's see how well this uh, does the trick and um, hopefully I can knock this out pretty quickly and if I come up with any better ideas, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know, all right? See y'all real soon. All right, guys, so I figured I'd give you a quick update. Um, this is the hole that I, uh, that I cut. I put the um, cardboard paper out around that hole and I essentially cut the shingles 
uh, around this cardboard. Now I left certain parts of the shingles uh, there because I still want to do kind of shingle fashion, right? So I um, undid this little part. I, I did tear it a little bit here, but that's okay. That's going to be covered up by metal underneath it anyways, so it's not really that important. Um, as long as the bottom layer is good and I, I, I cocked the U shape like I was talking about, but I'm essentially going to slide that little vent right underneath here and uh, this is all this all can be lifted up too so i'm going to slide it underneath there i'm gonna have to nail in these two bolts right here so that it's a little bit more flush but essentially it's going to sit right on top of this shingle right here and uh, in between these two layers as well so it's going to allow the rain to kind of um, pass right on top of it and hopefully not end up with some kind of water leak in this area. So uh, I'm hoping for the best. I, I think I did this correctly um, in terms of how it was done, how it should be done. Uh, and then once I put this down, I could put a little bead of caulking around this little, around this little, uh, I guess, metal piece right there. But technically that piece of metal is supposed to be water sealed. So uh, I don't think that's actually necessary. As long as I have the bottom, you uh, cocked off that way in the event that somehow water does get behind here it, it'll go around that bead and then kind of trickle itself down uh, so i'll show you how i kind of lay that out so that it best promotes water um, going down but uh but let me go ahead and um knock out the next one and then i'll come back up here with the vents and hopefully have the vents uh, installed pretty soon all right see you in a little bit all right guys so this is kind of what it looks like right now um i'm not done installing it yet so don't think that i did it wrong um but this part of it is going to be underneath these shingles right here um i've already kind of pulled it up i just what i'm doing right now is i'm fit testing the hole that i made and the hole is big enough so i'm gonna pull these shingles up essentially slide this guy underneath and then sit it back down and the bead that i'm gonna do on this back side is I'm gonna do a, a V shape here, pretty much. So I'm gonna do, I'm trying to get my, so a V shape here, and then I'm gonna go straight down with a line here and here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a, uh, a nice little kind of slope to it so that if water gets underneath this guy, it'll trickle over and then go back down, kind of deal, right? Um, and I'm not gonna seal up this bottom portion right here just because if it ever does leak I still want water to be able to exit from here otherwise if I seal up this part too it leaks up here water will build up here and go inside the house so that's kind of why I don't want to seal up this bottom portion right here okay all right so let me go ahead and knock that out I need a hammer and a few nails because I gotta nail this guy down uh, nail these two nails down and then once this guy goes down I need to nail some down, nails down on top of that as well and then we got one installed and we got to just do the other one all right so I'll see you back here in a little bit all right so this is what it looks like um, you can see I made a little v-shape here I double lined it uh, just thinking about it I was like it doesn't hurt to do an, a second line anyways and uh, I'm just really just gonna stick this down onto the roof and see how it goes I'll let you know if I run into any issues sliding it up and then kind of dropping it in so we'll see all right, see y'all. All right, guys. So this is what the finished product looks like. Um, it's in place now. I did have to nail a nail here. I also lifted up this flap and nailed a nail here. I laid a little bead of co a little bead of adhesive uh, or roof cement adhesive right here as well. Um, thinking after the fact, I could have laid a, an entire U on top too, but I, I didn't. Uh, so. <laughs> I had to go and think after the fact. I didn't want to pull this thing out once I had it installed because I knew that a lot of the adhesive that I put underneath had already kind of um, uh, stuck to the, 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 the roof, so I didn't want to pull it out again. But I just went ahead and played it safe. I nailed in three nails here, one, two, three, uh, over the shingles. Um, normally when you install this stuff, you have access to this portion of it so you can nail underneath the shingles, but I just nailed right over and pretty much just put the adhesive straight over that. Um, so um, I'm going to add a little bit more to make this kind of like a, a bump just so that it can last the test of time over wear and tear uh, from being beat down by rain and stuff like that. Um, but that's 
pretty much all I'm gonna do. I did lay a little bead of caulk here. I really didn't need to do that in my opinion, um, but I went ahead and just laid it there anyways and kind of smoothed it out so that water could hit that and then trick over the side just to reduce chances of it kind of hitting that and kind of climbing itself up, going over around that bead and then falling down, you know? So uh, let's just hope for the best. I think this is gonna work. I have a good feeling about it, so uh, Let's go ahead and move on to the next one and I'll, I'll kind of walk the attic as well and kind of cover up any exposed nails that should be covered up by my roofers, but they, they uh, neglected to do that sometimes. So uh, let's go ahead and knock that out and uh, just clean up this place and then I'll meet you back inside the house. All right, see you in a little bit. All right guys, so as I walked uh, the roof, I found a great example of really, really bad craftsmanship. Um, I am gonna fix this the best that I can uh, without doing too much work, uh, but I'll show you guys what my electrician actually did uh, whenever they installed the pole for my electric tie-in for my power. So this is the pole. Um, they, they installed the pole and um, you know, this was all checked by code, essentially. Um, so the, the inspector was okay with this, the way they installed it. But in terms of a water barrier selection, water barrier standpoint of view, you see, they didn't even shingle this. It's just sitting right on top of my roof. Um, and they might as well not even have this gasket here, right? Because water could trickle down underneath this little lip right here and just go right into my garage. Um, so uh, good news is that this is my garage. I'm not too worried about it, but I am gonna go back and fix this. So the way I'm gonna fix it is I, I puttied up all the nail holes so water can't protrude through there. And then I'm going to do a little bead of putty right here, essentially around the, the, around the exterior U of this. Uh, and again, this isn't the best way to fix it. The best way would be to replicate what I did earlier. But uh, again, I'm trying to reduce the amount of work I'm gonna do on this little portion right here. So uh, shame on me and shame on my electrician. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it's, it's my garage. If it was my house, um, as in like the interior of my house, I would worry about this a lot more. I would probably go ahead and just pull that entire plate up and uh, cut the shingles and slide it underneath like I did earlier uh, with my other vent. Uh, but because this is in uh, on my garage area and my garage area is completely isolated from my house, um, I'm just gonna leave it as is and deal with it later on, you know. As I say, that's for a future JT to worry about. So I'll, uh, I'll check you guys here in a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and continue walking the house after I fix this, all right? Talk to you soon. All right guys, so we're inside. I finished the second vent and I just wanted to show you all the vents from the inside. Um, that's the first vent right there. Uh, I think you guys can see it. It's pretty solid in terms of how it's holding up, but I can see the bottom of the nail head, so that's good as well. Um, the other one is over here. Um, and you can kind of, you can see it right there, pretty much. So that's kind of where I installed it at. It looks good. I'll, I should have enough room to plumb up a, uh, a six inch duck so that I can tie that into a motorized damper and then pretty much tied into my makeup air. So the motorized damper is nice because it's uh, <clears throat> the way I have my vents, where I had my wa my electrician set up my vents was that I had the vents just plug into an outlet and then had that outlet on a switch. So my motorized damper is gonna be tied into that exact same outlet. And anytime I turn it on, it's gonna turn on both my vent and my, um, my damper at the same time. So it works out pretty well. Um, no, no hard wiring or anything that needs to be done. I can pretty much just do this all myself. And uh, that's pretty much it, really. I um, Let me go ahead and start working on the plumbing now in the restroom. It's about 11.30, so I don't know if I'm gonna keep working here or not. I'm uh, making good progress, but at the same time, I it's a Sunday and I might be going off, sh uh, uh, I might be going out of town pretty soon, so. I do want to hang out with uh, with family when I can. Uh, so let me see how I feel after this and then we'll decide whether I want to keep working or not. All right, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up here and then I'll kind of stage the camera since I'm on the floor now. And that way you guys can see how I work through these pipes. All right, see y'all soon. All right guys, so I marked my cuts. Uh, this is the first cut right here. So I'm just gonna cut it right there. 
And then my second cut is going to be over here. So I'm going to mark this, and then I'm just switch swapping, really. I'm taking this pipe, moving it over to that one, taking that pipe, moving it over to this one. Right back, all right. All right, so that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now. So let's go ahead and transition over here. So that worked out pretty well. I'm happy with that. Let me go ahead and put up my plumbing stuff. I am going to go ahead and reroute these uh, hot and cold lines to the other side. And then the very last bit with this will be this electrical um, light right here. I think I may move it over here uh, and, and knock that out too. Okay. so. Let me go ahead and knock that out and I'll see you guys here real soon, all right? All right guys, so I got the water lines transferred over. These guys, these little 90 degree kickouts were a little bit trickier than I thought. I had to cut the bottom of it and, and uh, kind of split it open because once these caps are put on, I can't uh, slide them back out anymore. The hole is only big enough for the pipe. So cut the bottom off or just slice it open so I could slide the piping out. but slid it back in afterwards and um i in the re in, in the uh, effort to try to not ding the pipe with the knife i ended up dinging the pipe with the knife so there's a little bit of a cut right here um so i'm gonna have my plumber come back and cut after that um that way i don't risk the chance of water breaking out of the pipe right there um but other than that everything went pretty easy uh back in I'm going to attempt to do this electrical box and move it over to this side. Um, we'll see if that works or not. And um, we'll just see how that comes together. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to work, if, if it's going to be easy for me to move or not. So let me just give it a shot. And I think that's actually going to probably be the last thing that I do for today. So let me go ahead and knock that out. and. Uh, on this episode. See you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys. So we're here at the end of the episode. I managed to move that electric box. Um, it's looking pretty good for now. Uh, I moved the two pipes, moved the steel plates that protect the, uh, the two water pipes uh, from sheetrock nails. And that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm pretty much done. I don't think I have anything left to do here today. I didn't get to the fire blocks, which I didn't think I would, but, uh, you know, I uh, get to that another day. But for the most part, I'm happy with the progress that I made today on the house. And uh, we'll, well, I guess I'll see you guys next time on uh, JT time. See y'all real soon here on JT time.